essere qui a questa serata su Dante. Scusate se abbiamo dovuto spostare la data, eh, però siamo, sono felice che, che siete comunque con noi. Poi abbiamo qui con noi Clive Mappet, che è il vero ideatore di questa serata, per il quale vi chiedo un, un applauso. Perché... Gigante, che voi conoscete, professore italianistica presso l'ULB, eh, ospite e collaboratore fisso dell'istituto, grazie mille. Dante è seduto, H. Edoardo Di Pani è seduto in prima fila e verrà il momento giusto. Come sapete, questa serata terminerà con una degustazione eh, di prodotti toscani. E perché questa serata? Beh, perché il clima la proposta, ovviamente è un motivo essenziale, ma. Eh, io, come forse avete notato, sono fiorentina e a mio tempo al liceo ho dovuto imparare Dante a memoria, me lo sono scordato ovviamente, però ho avuto degli anni del liceo, probabilmente l'unica cosa che mi ricordo, eh, la Divina Commedia, avevo un professore straordinario che non soltanto ci massacrava facendoci imparare a memoria, ma la spiegava anche in un modo veramente straordinario e per me è difficile concettualmente capire come si possa tradurre la Divina Commedia perché eh, non c'è soltanto la lingua, c'è la matematica, c'è la simbologia, cioè è, è difficile capirlo. Quindi quando Clive mi ha detto facciamo un evento sulle traduzioni, ho detto beh sì, sono veramente curioso. Quindi questo è perché, eh, perché quindi per me è un evento un po' speciale stasera. Io lascerei direttamente la parola a Clive, che potrà spiegare meglio di me. Come al solito siamo in diretta streaming, saluti a tutti, io stanno in piedi chiaramente come si vedeva. Eh, hashtag Dante a chi ci usa sì. Beh, spiego innanzitutto che non sono dantista ah, sì, sì. no, 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 Something, some new version of it comes out, and they don't seem to be able to, to get it, to, to find a way of getting it so that it's uh, a definitive edition. Um, for instance, uh, uh, there's an interesting point here that A, D, the GRR, which is regional, this is Dante's medieval Italian, has always had uh, contemporaries uh, in English. Or to quote the more diligent translator, so many versions of the Divine Comedy exist in English that a new one might well seem needless. Where have I heard that before? These are the words of Charles Elliot Norton, written in 1891. So, and yet they, they continue to come out. So I'm going to skip a couple of the generations, bring us in the 20th, uh, 20th century. And the, the version that uh, of the, of the, 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 the was most recommended by, by uh, Ezra Pound was this of Lawrence Beeman. And uh, I think you can see it there. Is it uh, just in the end? And, uh, the, but the thing about it was that uh, his translation uh, used uh, the old English still in, in those days it was considered appropriate and they had with the V and the vowel in it. Uh, so you have certain phrases that like I am not the thou thinkest and it, it makes it immediately seem terribly terribly antiquated even though it's 1923. But that's because of these strange uh, phenomenon that nobody has ever explained to me how English lost the two. The, people used to call it, say, be and thou, and then one day they woke up and didn't say it anymore. I think that's unique in, in uh, modern European languages. I uh, can't imagine Italian without or French or any other. Uh, anyway, after that, uh, we come to Bartholomew L. Sayers a few uh, years later. 
and her version uh, was also uh, a little bit antiquated. But her, the reason um, people were dissatisfied with her was because she was a popular writer. She was a detective story writer. She worked uh, very popular novels. And so people thought that she couldn't possibly be serious. And uh, the fact that she was a, a woman who probably didn't help it either. Um, it's now at this point, uh, now we are in the, up in the 1940s after the poor first thing, the of World War. And uh, we come to John Charlie. Now, uh, it's an odd thing that how few Italians or Italian Americans there are uh, in uh, this list. Uh, the, among the, the writers here that I'm going to give you are translated uh, Dante are Mandelbaum, Kirk Thatcher, O'Brien, Ellis, Hollander, Gordon, Eslin, Prinsky. Uh, but in other words, they devoted their lives to, uh, <coughs> to the study of, uh, in, of uh, Dante. But about Charlie, um, he had also attempted uh, to tell Salim, and that was an evening I want to say that the book uh, uh, Sayers and Binion were insisted on the Ted Salim, which is extremely complicated, an interlocked uh, system of, of uh, making a uh, rhyme that is essential to, uh, to uh, English, uh, to essential to Dante. But uh, in English, it uh, is rather awkward. So then we have C.H. Uh, Nissen. And he was uh, a translator uh, who came out with uh, his own version of the Pitcoradia. And uh, what did he have to say about those who previous predeceased him? Uh, predeceased him? No, not predeceased him. Preceded him. Uh, in in the, the other people who have tried. Uh, he bashes them mercilessly, uh, choosing the worst examples he can find in uh, Sayers and Binion and Charlie uh, to then condemn them for clumsiness um, and everything else. He, of course, is going to do it right. Uh, but naturally, anyone who can find something wrong uh, when you have 47,000 lines of text to uh, translate. Um, anyway, uh, he, but he did it without rhyme, so that it was, uh, makes it a lot simpler. Um, then, uh, about the same year, we had a little one named uh, Mendelbaum. I have been doing this properly. Uh, I'm not sure we should, <laughs> I should already have shown you. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. And then Charlie, we also had Charlie. And uh, now we come to Mendelbaum. Um, and um, he, 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 his, his approach was simply to cover his uh, his predecessors with uh, you know, other direct competition uh, under a blanket of silence. So, um, but critics said he was very, it was quite good. Uh, three years later, um, we have an arrogant young man named Steve Ellis, well, I don't know how young he was, but he was certainly arrogant enough, who condemned everybody else but him as having uh, created works that were flooding, uh, formal, and prolix. And so, but uh, arrogant enough, and uh, he saved some of his criticism for. Uh, uh, by Dorothy Sayers, he said she was quite good. That he gave her credit for creating, for conveying Dante's energy and spiritedness. Um, finally, here's a little Italian having a triad, Mark Musa. Here we go. Well, that's uh, Sisson. He was the guy who sold it. There we this is uh, Mark Musa, and uh, he claimed that he said it was no easy. The the price that had to be paid for performing certain uh, for translating works into uh, rhyme 
was disastrously high. And therefore, he said that no one should write uh, moral poems, extensive poems, uh, uh, since, since Milton, Milton had uh, abolished his rhyme for Carvac's loss, and he thought that should be done the same. Um, barely a year goes by, and we have Robert Pinsky with a solution to the middle of uh, to getting a Dante into English. But uh, he, ah, yes, that, this is interesting because he has a ingenious uh, solution to the problem of rhyme. Uh, he simplifies it by saying he takes any two or three words that share a vowel or a consonant and somehow look alike. And that's good enough. Uh, for example, swans and stones. <coughs> with some people call it an eye rhyme. When you can see, but you can't really hear it. But he claims that to rhyme faces and houses is better than, is more appealing than faces places. <laughs> faces and houses. That's uh, fine. So he, uh, that's, that is the way he manages it. Now we have uh, Anthony Ezolan. Uh, uh, his, uh, oh, yeah. uh, and he was a well-mannered scholar who uh, called Charlie's translation superb, but then it can't resist adding that he compromises some of the meaning to save about half of the rhyme. Well, that's, that's a compliment that leaves uh, something to be desired. Um, we have Robert M. Durning that came out of the very uh, let me see there. Uh, this 1911 uh, film, first major film 
of um, full length Google Metaggio uh, that the Italians uh, made. It was filmed first in uh, Naples in 1911. The director is uh, uh, Giuseppe Di, Di, Licori, Di Buoni, and uh, it took three years to make. <laughs> it took three years to make and uh, was a tremendous international success and grossed two million dollars, which is one heck of a lot of money in those days. So you can, uh, it's about 48 minutes long, I think, you want to subject you to that. This was a, 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 a new and modern version of the adaptation uh, by uh, the rock group Tangerine Dream, uh, which doesn't add much. Nineteen seventeen. Nineteen nineteen eleven. 